Hi, this is Mike Hendrickson from Strata and Hadoop World in New York City. I'm here with Benjamin Bangfort and Sean Murphy. How are you guys doing? Doing great, thanks. So you guys gave a tutorial yesterday. Before we get to what the what the tutorial was about, can you talk a little bit about who you are and what you do and, and, and what led you to the tutorial? Sure, so I'm a data scientist at Cobrain Company and I also do research at the University of Maryland in natural language understanding okay. and cognition. So. Interesting, and Sean? Yeah, I'm a data scientist at the Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Lab uh, and then I also do a lot of it consulting and advising for startups. And so your tutorial was about natural language processing and distributed computing. Um, that's a pretty broad area. So can you talk a little bit more specifically what it was that you talked about? Sure, so uh, natural language processing, the discipline itself is focusing on machine learning techniques. Um, and as we've learned from Google and others, you know, more data is better than bigger algorithms. So natural language processing as a discipline is benefiting from really, really large corpora. Um, you know, there are corporate out there that are in the terabytes compressed and they have really deep language uh, components to it. And so in order to do some of the NLP techniques, you're going to need to combine it with some sort of distributed uh, technique to, to pull out rich and relevant information. And so with the tutorial, what we wanted to do is walk people through the pipeline of NLP, through the various stages, so that they could take their own corpora, their own domain-specific large body of text, use these technologies, break down the text, and then build applications from that. So you used the word discipline with NLP. Mm -hmm. That's a really interesting combination together. So is NLP at a point to where it's becoming a discipline? Is there more than just tools and a language? Or what is a discipline? Well, I'd say it's definitely a discipline uh, now, particularly because it's a subset of artificial intelligence. Uh, so we think about natural language understanding as being a core part of uh, artificial agency um, and, and, and leading to reasoning systems uh, that can do better um, you know, with dealing with the real world and interacting with humans. So yeah, I'd say it's definitely a, a big part of artificial intelligence. So a discipline. A discipline, absolutely. Okay. So NLP seems like one of the, uh, the frontiers for big data to me. It seems like there's a lot to gain on this and a lot to grow and, and, and change a lot. So what do you see as the biggest uh, challenges ahead for people who are using NLP technologies? That is an excellent question. <laughs> this is probably a good time to mention open whims. Oh, uh, that's true. So right now I'd say that, you know, we think of unstructured raw data. Yep. And the fact is that, you know, language is not unstructured. You and I have a shared understanding based on some grammatical or formal language structure and we need machines to be able to get access to that structure so that we can stop calling it wrong. The problem is, right now, most applications are information extraction applications for search or recommenders or things like that. We haven't gotten to the truly semantic. We haven't even gotten past the truly syntactic right. um, methodologies of analyzing text. And so that's where we would like to get to. Um, so, so is body language a, uh, <laughs> something that can be measured down in, in the future, do you think? Like, you know, when you're talking, sometimes the, the body language is as much as important as, you know, what's coming out of your mouth at the same time. Uh, absolutely. I, yeah, I think you highlight an interesting point that when, when people talk we're, and we speak to each other and we communicate with language, there's a lot more than just one data stream happening. Yes. And so you know, computers are a bit far from that at the moment. We're just worried about the text for now. <laughs> So, do you think things like Google Glass and other wearables down the road that will sense our galvanic responses, our pupils, and things like that are a direction that NLP will be able to have a, a role with? Um, potentially. Uh, we could certainly use those as heuristic signals to try to elicit meaning or to better uh, deal with ambiguity. Um, you know, we could sort of put that emotional or sentimental responses into our processes. Um, and certainly I think that the robotics field will definitely benefit from you know, lang that type of language sensing uh, you know, for agents that respond to particularly crises um, and, and having robots that are in conflict areas or disaster areas. Excellent. And I think also, when, if we're going to get to the Star Trek computer, where we're <laughs> talking to the computer, if the computer system that we're interacting with has a better sense of our physiologic state, because it is monitoring our pulse, it is monitoring our level of perspiration or sweat, the connectivity of the skin, that's additional information with which to place our speech in context. And so I think that will be powerful. Uh, 
but a little bit down the line. Yeah, there's this whole uh, continuum of creepy to really cool. And so some of them might be kind of kind of on the creepy side, like you know, if you take a picture, and your galvanic response to that picture says you really like it, yeah, and you know it's automatically tagged from some NLP system that says that was your most favorited picture you took, but it's not of something you probably should have taken. Yeah. Um, you know, there's that whole continuum that I, I think technology oftentimes can simultaneously be creepy and awesome, right? It's not the technology itself; it's the application of that technology. That's creepy. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Excellent. But what we'd really like to do is have the technology allow us to think about other things. Like, if we can worry less about communication, particularly between each other and resolving ambiguities. I think to take it back to the text level, you know, think about how much ambiguity exists in email communications alone. Yeah. Yeah. If we could communicate more effectively and have systems that help that communication, then that can lead us to more cooperative endeavors. And hopefully that's the goal of any technological system uh, that we're building. Gentlemen, thank you for your time. We look forward to seeing you at future Strata Hadoop worlds. Thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah, thank you.